you doing guys? Today we are going to continue the reassembly of the 4 horsepower Briggs & Stratton vertical shaft engine for the rug carpet cut. Right now I'm going to go ahead and start putting the carburetor back together. It is a pulsed jet I believe it's called. Um, I've already soaked it, cleaned it, blown it out with air, made sure everything's super clean. Luckily there's not really any corrosion in the carburetor itself. Uh, early style with a brass pickup tube. Um, overall in real nice shape. The throttle shaft is there's no play in the throttle shaft. The choke piece seems to work really good. So happy with that. So this carburetor is going to get reused. Now I don't have a complete kit all in one for this. So I'm going to kind of bastardize two kits into one. Um, namely this kit that I have for one of these carburetors has the diaphragm, it has the needle to seat set up, but it doesn't have the pulse spring and um, cover to the spring. You know, it, so what I have is this little thing that I've had in my toolbox for years, So, and it's got a new diaphragm. So I'm going to take this portion and put it in the carburetor, and I'm going to use the needle and seat uh, portion out of that kit in order to put it together. Uh, pretty simple carburetor. The spring goes in this hole, then the cover, the diaphragm slides on top of that. Then we have the cover, the pulse cover, which just basically lines up with that roll pin. Uh, it's a little difficult with one hand. There we go, sorry. Uh, and then it's got the four screws and you just snug the screws down. We don't have to get crazy crazy with them. Uh, we also, over on this side, we put the, we screw the seat portion all the way down. Just snug it in, doesn't need to be super tight. And then uh, assemble the needle system, which is basically the base goes first. Then we have the O-ring, which goes next. You just drop that in. There is a little brass washer that goes on top of that. And the reason for that is this spring, oops, sorry, this spring slides onto the knee, onto the actual screw needle, go like that. And then this whole assembly screws down inside. And then the spring pressure obviously keeps this needle from working itself out. It also creates the tension or the pressure, I should say, on the O-ring to seal that. Um, kind of a neat setup. Um, the needle uh, is turned out one and a half turns from being seated. So screw it down real gently, let it, you know, just barely touch, then screw it out one and a half turns in the base setting for that needle is all set. Last part, I also have a new intake seal, which goes into the groove that you see right, where is it? Right there in the base of the carburetor, and that seals along this. When we slide the carburetor over the intake tube, this is what makes the seal. I'm gonna put it in dry. In other words, I'm just gonna, you know, put it in the slot. But when I go to install the carburetor onto the intake tube, I will put just a little bit of WD-40 on there just to lubricate it. And just It'll help it just slide on. And then there's a, a base gasket. But we'll get to that when we go ahead and install it on the fuel tank. So with that, let me get this carburetor back together and we'll start talking about putting it on the fuel tank. With the carburetor pretty much all set to go, I went ahead and installed the intake tube. Just hit the end with some Scotch-Brite to make sure it's good and clean. This is where the carburetor actually slides on. Uh, put the two bolts in, just snugged them down with a new gasket. Um, I did put a little anti-seize on the ends of these screws just so, you know, if there's ever a need to take this off, it'll just make it easier. Hopefully they didn't gall or destroy the threads. That should be all set. Uh, have the breather tube that goes back to the carburetor in place. Cleaned both ends with the Scotch-Brite, blew out the tube. I went ahead and cleaned the breather system all up. So all that is nice and clean. The tube fits nice and snug in the rubber grommet, so we're good there. I have a new gasket. It has these two little cutouts uh, in it right there on the left side. They line up with these little holes, so when you drop this thing on, it goes on like that. Uh, again, I'll put a little touch of anti-seize on each one of those bolts. I will put it in place, line it all up, snug them down, and the breather and the intake tube. Oh, I forgot one other thing on the intake tube. Right here, there's this clip. This clip goes down on the post, and then you, you force it down one more, you know, one more time, and it 
catches on those tangs and that's what also holds the breather tube in place. So I'm going to get all that together and we will move on to the next step. Got a couple more pieces on getting ready to install the carburetor in the gas tank. Um, got the governor actuator in place. Just it's held in by a screw, just a little bit of anti-seize and tightened it down. Just linked the rod as the manual had said because I kind of forgot how to put that in. We got our clip in. This is nice and tight or nice and firmly in place. Breathers in place. And I got the bore tin in place because I need to do that before I can put the gas tank on because the head, the gas tank, and the carburetor are all kind of intertwined with themselves. Uh, meaning the carburetor has to be on the gas tank, which has to slip onto these two pipes. There's a bracket that comes over and catches two of the head bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and lightly put the head in place with the with a couple of the bolts and then install the carburetor and gas tank by just and then there's a I should say there's a bolt that holds the back part of the gas tank right over there. So that's the plan. It's it's kind of a weird thing about Briggs and Strat and they're kind of like all layered, even the uh, horizontal shaft motors. Um, but hey, it seems to be going together quite well. Everything looks really nice and clean and straight. And I'm looking forward to seeing this thing pretty much all together. All right, let me get to it. Things are moving along smoothly so far. Uh, carburetors installed, just have the gasket, then put the carburetor in, just being careful that when you drop the uh, lift tubes in, they don't, you know, you don't bind them up or bend them or anything like that. And then the three screws, the three base screws are in place and just snug down with a uh, screwdriver. I believe I already showed you the air horns on there, cleaned and just slipped the um, breather elbow in place. I did go ahead and put the throttle arm and the throttle spring in place so that way I can kind of, you know, bend it, put the throttle arm on first and then start to slide it onto the intake tube. Uh, the gas or the seal has been uh, lubricated with a little WD-40, a little bit of WD-40 there. Head is cleaned. Uh, so the deck was cleaned. Uh, then I started put. I got the head gasket in place. Tin is in place. Uh, these are the three longer bolts. There's three long bolts and five shorter bolts. The, the longer bolts go in the lower section of the head, according to the manual, which is right there. It says it. You know, long screws in these three holes. So that's where I put them. So we're pretty much, I'm pretty much ready. I'm just going to go ahead and mount the gas tank, uh, the carburetor, the gas tank, and I'm going to start, you know, torquing the head into place. The carburetor has been installed with the gas tank. Two of the head bolts goes through the bracket that holds the gas tank in place. These are the three long bolts, as I indicated earlier. These are the five shorter bolts. Uh, everything's torqued uh, to 140 inch pounds, just as the manual states. This is a brand new J8 spark plug, uh, gapped at 30 thousandths, uh, just as the manual had said. The, um, it's interesting, the manual said that this particular engine takes an inch and a half uh, spark plug. When you cross-reference that in the manual, an inch and a half uh, spark plug is a J8C. So that's what we got going on there. Uh, next up, um, I'm going to go ahead and put the ignition system in. We'll get that all done. Um, just a little side note, what I'm doing here on the is I am actually going to do a little custom paint job on the air cleaner. Uh, pretty much what I did was I block sanded this thing all down. I didn't take, I didn't sandblast or nothing like that. It was NOS, so I just took the original factory finish, uh, blocked it down, hit it with a couple coats of primer surfacer, and just wet sanded that with 600. So I'm getting ready to start to do the layout on the custom paint job. I haven't done the base yet. Um, this has just been primed. I'm just going to leave this for now, and I'll, I'll, I'll do this later. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to start doing some layout on that. So in theory, we should be getting to a point where we have basically the whole motor set up. I am going to get going on the air cleaner and then we'll hit the ignition. The air cleaner paint job was a fail. I ended up having to put paint stripper all over it to get all the paint off the uh, air cleaner. 
we'll talk about that at a later date. But for right now, what I need to do is I need to get the throttle system from the old motor onto the new motor. So I went out to the shed, pulled the old rug motor out. I need to take this, there's two little bolts. There's one right here and there's one over here on this side. I need to remove those, remove the entire throttle piece. I do have to take off this governor spring and reuse that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take a picture of all this so I make sure I put it all back together the way it is. I think I am going to go ahead and glass bead this uh, apparatus so it looks a little bit uh, cleaner and not quite as uh, crappy. And then what we'll do is we'll think about the wiring of the ignition and putting the ignition in uh, itself. So let me go ahead, let me get this apart, cleaned and hooked up. A quick glass bead and some engine clear makes that throttle bracket look pretty darn nice. I did cover the contacts with some tape uh, for the kill, for the kill wire, so that way I won't have any problems with it, you know, actually killing the motor. So once this dries, we'll go ahead and install it on the carburetor. While the throttle bracket uh, dries, I decided to make a new wire for the ignition system. Uh, this wire actually connects to the throttle, so when you close it all the way, it actually kills the motor. Um, this wire I'm going to have to reuse. I wanted to replace it, but I couldn't find a piece of a solid core copper wire this thin anywhere around. So I just went to home, went to HD, and I got this 14 gauge piece of solid core copper, which is actually pretty cool because it's south wire, 14 gauge. Uh, in motor is 600 volt gasoline and oil resistant so that's exactly what we're looking for so I went ahead and I cleaned off a little bit of the sheath at one end that's going to slide into the condenser I took some of the sheath off soldered uh, a portion of wire to it to kind of make a pigtail this wire is going to go to the kill switch which then ultimately goes to the throttle and this end of the wire will uh, clip into the coil, which is right there. So um, once I get to that point, I'll just make these final, you know, bends so everything fits real nice and clean. This will be in the air, so it won't, you know, even though I have some heat shrink, there's no chance of it uh, going to ground and killing the motor. So that portion of it is all done. I'm going to go ahead and start putting the actual ignition together. The ignition is all set. We have the points in place. The plunger rod with the groove showing out is in. Spring, uh, point spring is in. I made sure this wire is not going to get, interf you know, not going to interfere with the spring. Um, I did put a little bit longer bolt in this hole because the threads are kind of iffy, but it holds down tight. We did go ahead and gap the rings at the most, um, most open to 20 thousandths, so that's all set. As you can see, I kind of routed the, the ignition, internal ignition wires. I do have to cover this up a little better. Um, this wire here goes to the ignition, or to the coil, I'm sorry, and this wire will eventually make it over to the kill on the throttle. I'm gonna go ahead, install the seal on the crankshaft, and then put the dust cap on top. Seal is in. Dust covers on. I rerouted the wires and yes, there's a little bit of electrical tape right here and right there. The electrical tape here is because for whatever reason the heat shrink tubing, it cracked and I could see the copper wire. So that would mean that it's going to eventually just arc out and ground the, ground the ignition system. This is the male female connector for the kill wire. I just put a piece of tape around that just to make sure that's all that's not going to come apart unless I want it to come apart and I put this little wire tie right here to hold the wiring to the breather tube so that should be all set this is all set um, I'm going to give that a little bit more time to dry and then we'll go ahead and mount the throttle bracket we'll mount the kill wire and oh the choke get the air cleaner and button this thing up so we can get it on the engine stand Flywheels installed, new aluminum keys put in place, torque to 50 foot-pounds. I think it's supposed to be 60, but trust me, 50 is tight enough. Um, new starter, got the grass screen in place. I spun the motor a little bit to make sure the wires didn't uh, touch anything. 
I did I did put a little bit of electrical tape around this area right here because number one for some reason my heat shrink tubing cracked right there I don't know why but it did and two it's right on this little device or this little holder so I just want to make sure nothing cuts through those wires wire tied everything in place put a little electrical tape around this uh, clip uh, male female clip for the kill wire just so it doesn't pop apart uh, this is the wire for the coil we'll be installing the coil shortly kill wire is in it's clipped into the throttle because if we take a look right here there's a little piece of copper wire right there that sticks out and when you take this engine you go all the way to um, idle and then just a little bit more you notice that this little thing popped down and touches that copper wire and that's the kill so we'll go back to idle and the wires not touching anything so the ignition would work we go to full throttle no problem we look down the throat full throttle I mean the choke is open full throttle and then in this case how this engine starts is you go to full throttle and then you just go one more click and what that does is that sets the choke then you can start the engine and as soon as it starts the pop 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 you go like that goes to full throttle obviously but the choke uh, turns off and we can just click it down into idle and that's how this particular engine runs so everything seems to be adjusted correctly um, you know obviously I didn't check for spark yet but next up we're gonna go ahead and put the coil in place and set the air gap put the spark plug wire on put the cover on it and then man we'll be right there almost ready to start it got the uh, coil in place um, my two 12 24 bolts are in place everything's tightened down i had i just used a piece of um this i didn't use this i used a piece of manila um folder just cut a piece slipped it in between the coil and the flywheel turned the magnet around loosened up the bolts the coil then slid as it got drawn in by the magnet tighten the bolts down then just spin the flywheel to just rotate out the piece of manila folder so that is set i hooked up the wire from the um condenser to the bottom of the coil the spark plug is in place so the ignition oh and then i got the little the little i guess the the wind diverter to blow it back uh, blow air over the uh intake and exhaust valves more uh, that's in place so everything there is all set to go i got a brand new gas cap it finally came it only took two weeks <laughs> for it to show up but got the new uh, gas cap i'm going to go ahead and put on the blower cover and i'm going to go get the air filter and we'll put the air filter on it and we'll call this stage of the motor rebuild complete for the air cleaner i was going to do a full custom kind of paint job on it to kind of make it look different but it was a it turned into a fail so I said for time purposes I just stripped it down and I painted it with some engine black um, semi-flat black so that way it'll, it'll look the part um, the filter that I got was a rotary but it was a little bit too much it stuck over quite a bit from the base it fit perfectly inside just as it supposed to in the center um, I guess where it draws the air in it it fit perfectly but the edges so I just went ahead and took my scissors and trimmed it down so that way when I put the lid on it fits you know it it squishes it down and it seals but you can get the lid on before you really had to force the lid on and it just wasn't right um, so I haven't oiled it yet and I will oil it when I get ready to actually run the engine um, just pretty simple put that thing there take this thing and shove it down in the center this is actually from my five horsepower uh Briggs and Stratton engine for my mini bike I had to steal it out of that because I didn't have this one didn't have one in it so I need it in order to run this motor so when I do the mini bike motor I'll find another one I guess and then this just squeezes down I got a brand new stud screw which fits uh perfectly um and then, oh, I forgot to say one thing. I have to do, I have to put them, I have to mount the muffler. Um, so I went downstairs and again, I stole uh, an exhaust gasket out of the kit that's for my five horsepower uh, mini bike engine. Um, but this fits the four. So we're going to use this. I got the, I got to go get some bolts because the bolts that I have are, are bad. So I'm going to go get the bolts. I got to get a little fiber washer for this so it seals. And then 
I will show you what this old girl looks like. Everything is installed. Air cleaners in place. The mufflers in place. I did put some anti-seize on these bolts. So hopefully if we ever have to take it apart, hopefully we don't, uh, it will come apart. I got the air or the exhaust diverter forward. I did go to the hardware store and get a little stainless steel screw to put that into the muffler. This is NOS. This is not NOS. This piece here is from the original engine. But the other thing too, is the original engine was blowing down onto the engine plate, um, which I didn't, I don't want that to happen anymore. So I, I twisted it around and I aimed it forward. So that way it just kind of blows the exhaust forward. The, the flywheel air will blow it away, things of that nature. So it is all set. I am in the process of mixing up some break-in oil uh, Luke is breaking lube and some fresh 30 weight uh, Rotella. So I'm just going to mix. You can see where the breaking oil is down here at the bottom. This is regular 30 weight. So I got my little stick. I'll mix that up um, and then I'll go ahead and pour that into the crankcase. I'll top it off with some fresh uh, 30 weight. So the engine is all set in theory to start. But unfortunately, that will be for another video. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I very, very much appreciate all your viewership and your kind comments. Uh, very shortly, we'll have this engine running, semi-broken in, and back on the rug carpet cut. All right, guys, thank you very much. And until we meet again, you have a great day.